Hi, everyone, and welcome to Straight Talk with Sophia and Juan. And today it is episode 12, and we're going to be exploring practical guidance for living in fullness and richness in all things physical. And um, we have our questioner here, and she's going to summarize the question for us, and we'll get started. Thank you, Sophia. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so my question was prompted by the gentleman who was with you and one a few weeks ago. And that question was, will there be a financial remedy for the people? And so I was interested in asking one if he could please expand on the whole theme of self-worth and its relationship to money. And I was hoping that he could provide some practical steps for us, a little bit like a guide map, because sometimes we can be, it can be very helpful for us to have a little bit of a step-by-step -step practical approach to things, because we've got lots of evidence of all the reasons why perhaps we're not worthy. Um, and I was also, uh, and of course, this is the, the, the intention of the question is to help the collective create a wave, so to speak, of self-worth, so that we can create this heart-based currency idea of love, a, a wave of love and self-value across the planet. And uh, yeah, so that was what I was hoping that we could talk about today. So thank you so much again for the opportunity. Okay, and thank you for the question. It's a great question. Um, it reaches deeply into, well, it reached deeply into my life and as I explored it even more so, and I, I'm sure a lot of people are feeling that. Um, one, and spoke to, we spoke several times about this and initially he began with the concept of abundance and what it is. And so I'm going to read it and interrupt me and um, with your thoughts about what he said as we go. Okay. He, okay. Um, he said, we will begin with the concept of abundance. What is it defined as? What does it feel like? If you search for official definitions, words like necessary or more than enough are included. It is interesting that concepts like enough and necessary are implied in the definition of such a word, indicating limits and implying restrictions. This is more evidence of how society has been set up for you here. Language is important, and as you untangle the brainwashing and manipulation, look deeply at the words commonly used, for there is an agenda that you'll need to unravel as well. To consider abundance without restrictions, you'll want to reduce it to the concept of desire. Then, connect it to pleasure or even satisfaction. For a child, a toddler, one or two pieces of chalk and a concrete sidewalk brings pleasure, satisfaction, and joy. For an adult, an artist, more colors and materials inspire joy and passionate creation. Both the toddler and the seasoned artist experience feelings of abundance in their activity they feel satisfied with their efforts and vast, with vastly different amounts of stuff. Now, this may sound obvious to you, yet it illustrates the first necessary component of the idea of abundance, and that is perception. Right. Right. And I think that's that's what we were talking about just before we came on here about abundance does not necessarily mean how much money you have in your bank account, because abundance can come, as you know. In many ways, mm -hmm. it can be gifts, uh, gifts of service. It can be can be anything. But you know, one brings up a, a huge point, and that's the whole idea of enough mm -hmm. and desire. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think it's very prevalent among, and maybe it's just myself. Although I don't, I don't think it's just me. We have been told, you know, money does not grow in trees. Mm -hmm. We've been told that it's got to be hard. We've got to slog. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. um you got to put your worth in mm -hmm. you know um and are we allowed am i allowed yes. are you allowed right. to have abundance right. Right. you know money is the root of all evil so right. we've been oh wow yeah that's right to one's point we really have been brainwashed mm -hmm. to believe that we're not allowed to have those experience of joy now of course we have to always manage the ego self right and as um some wonderful teachers that i worked with in the past they talked about you know you might want that fancy house on the hill but for what purpose who wants it is it the ego to be the envy of all their fellows or is it because you just 
adore the absolute beauty that has surrounded you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge too, right? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed? You know? Right, right. And who makes the decision about what you're allowed? And a lot of um, the discussion you'll hear one saying in a lot of the discussion, you'll hear one talking about an unraveling and an undoing of those ideas of worth and worthy and allow what can I what will I allow? What am I good enough to get? Um, because those are manufactured ideas. Mm -hmm. And and the whole discussion today talks about what we actually know inside of us as truth and then how to translate that into living that way mm -hmm. so um yeah yeah so um he goes on the next section um i'm going to read from talks about um steps which is what you asked for and which i'm so glad you did and it's a little bit quirky for me, but I'll read it. <laughs> I, I, I just, I was surprised, um, but here we go. Um, he said, let us speak now of some step-by-step -step considerations that will lead one to feelings of worthiness as these are taken and deeply assumed or held as truth. The creative field around oneself becomes one that holds worth, worth that is recognized by self self-worth and then he so said he's, go ahead sorry i was gonna say so he's talking about our energetic field and what we carry in our auric field basically mm -hmm. around us okay. mm -hmm. he said physical life occurs within a creative field that field mm -hmm. holds sensation color sound indeed it holds a frequency okay okay and he said you will discover on your journey that the way you feel has everything to do with the day or moment you're experiencing. Your field, which, which is colored by you, allows for a certain range in, in, of frequency. Frequency okay. can be harmonious, unharmonious. Its colors can be rich or depleted. Its feelings can be either tight or open. And all of these attributes exist on a range. And he also said, as a side note, there's often a constant shifting and alteration from one to moment, from moment to moment, I'm sorry, um, of that range. And then he said, abundance does not exist separate from this field. You will find, and often, that extremely generous people are often in full supply of the things in which they are generous with. Okay. So basically what I'm hearing is I'm going to use language that I know if that's okay. Yes. We can, we can either be walking around as a human being, having an expression on the planet, having our heart sing harmono harmoniously or our emotions or our, our, our perceived reality is of joy. Mm -hmm. We're seeing things that are beautiful. We're recognizing things that are good. We're focusing on things that make us feel good mm -hmm. and lift our spirits that bring us hope and joy and love. Mm -hmm. And that makes the heart song. You could say the heart sings in abundance mm -hmm. or, and that would be in our field. That right. would be in the field. I think that he's saying, yes. or we could be focusing on all the things that we don't want, all of the evidence that is placed in front of us. If we look anywhere outside of our reality mm -hmm, right now, mm -hmm. all of the things that say, no, 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 this is, you know, this is, mm -hmm. you know, doom and gloom and whatnot. And then that shouts basically into the real, into your field. And then that completely lowers or degrades that frequency range. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. abundance would then no longer be reachable. Then, right. Then it's, it's almost, it's been erased, right. By mm -hmm. what you accepted as true whatever it was, what do you accept it as more true than that wonderful feeling you had while you were whistling Dixie, you know, looking at mm -hmm. something beautiful, happy, and then all of a sudden, uh, whatever, something shows up on your news feed that you were looking at your, you know, something and, and there it goes. And I think, I love that you said that because he, he talks a lot about this field. And mm -hmm. he also said that he, he actually requested that we speak together while he, I'm reading today so that we can interject our own experiences of it. And I 
am feeling, although this was not specifically said by Juan, this is my feeling about it, is that what this whole thing is going to amount to for us is to strengthen our core truth, our core self, our core knowing, and that will then be the field and the only field that we have to operate within because that will be so true that all the dings and, you know, slights mm -hmm. and unpaid bills and, you know, whatever is that comes at us and says, no, 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 you're not that you're this, you're this low level McDonald's employee, you know, you're this, whatever you're this other person. You're not, you're not the essence of love that you're, you were feeling this morning, looking at the sunrise, you're this other mm -hmm. thing. And I think that the whole point of these steps that I'm going to read in a, in a minute are to give us something to do, a physical thing to do that I said is a little quirky for me, but I'll do it if it'll work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to just bring it back, bring back that feeling that we had when whatever the, whatever that moment was that we had that feeling that, and then that moment is when we knew who we were, what we were and what all of that felt like, because it's the feelings that we have that create the frequency of our creative field. Mm -hmm. It's our emotions. And yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. The emotions are so powerful. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that most of your listeners realize how powerful mm -hmm. their emotions mm -hmm. are. Thoughts create emotions, emotions create your vibe. Mm -hmm. and, that, mm -hmm. and that is, that is what, you know, goes out into the world and brings back to you a, as a vibrational frequency match to what, what we're, how we're walking around, right? The whole, you know, you wake up in the morning, you stub your toe, you spill toothpaste on your blouse and now you spill your coffee and, Right. That whole negative attitude you yes. going down into the whole spiral of despair and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. As the day goes on, right. right. And right. and the opposite the other way. And I remember when my when my little boy was six, I remember some cougar had gotten had escaped and he was a little bit afraid that there might be a tiger that would jump out from the woods and whatnot. This is living in the Muskogas in Canada. There are no mm -hmm. tigers there, thankfully. But I was reading a book by Neil Donald Walsh at the time and um and he he just said he did, he didn't want to feel scared. He's a little boy, right? I don't want to mm -hmm. feel scared, mommy. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and he was he was finding himself having negative thoughts. And so when I would joke with him, I'd say, okay, do jumping jacks, and you've got to say, I want to feel good. I want to feel good. And by the time he got to four, he'd start to giggle. Ah, because that big physiological movement is sometimes what we need to snap ourselves out of our funk, out yeah. of that frequency funk, so that we can start to recreate. Again, I'll stop there. It's no, that's a wonderful <laughs> story. That's a wonderful story. I love that story. Um, and I remember raising my sons as well. One of them was an, you know, was an artist, still is. And um, he had this picture. He drew this picture. It was a stick figure guy who jumped, was jumping off a building. And I was teaching those kinds of things too, similar to what you were obviously right we are who we are <laughs> anyway mm -hmm. the stick finger guy jumps off a roof and says i'm flying i'm flying his big smile i can't believe it and the minute he says i can't believe it he crashes to the ground right. and so <laughs> so i was, he just said look mom and i said that's it you cap you encapsulated the whole idea right there you know the minute he couldn't believe it he didn't do it anymore so i thought that was very well, that brings up a really it brings up a really important point about belief, and I'm sure one will get into that as well. Mm -hmm. Belief, the belief that we can have, the belief mm -hmm. that we're allowed, right? Mm -hmm. That we're enough, that we are mm -hmm. always enough. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, okay, so um, I'm going to read this one part quickly, just because it illustrates something um, that I think may be helpful to people. He he talked about. Um, that he said, if some people that are abundant in one area of their life find themselves stingy in another area. And this will be because they say, there is not enough blank for me to share with you. I have to keep what little I have to myself or I will be less, I will have less because of it. And he said, what those people don't understand is that with that statement, they are already lesser for it. It is their imagination imagining that makes that so. 
declaring, I don't have enough, colors the creative field in which you operate. As an answer, when faced with the opportunity to share what you feel you have little of, far better to respond, I'm sorry, that's not something I can do right now. However, I could do this. Would that help? And it was just a shift, just a slight shift. That's all. Instead of mm -hmm. validating lack, yeah, validate, oh, I have abundance here. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I can, instead of saying no, you're saying yeah. uh, not, maybe not for that, but I can here. So still being open. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I liked that because it's very subtle. Very it, beautiful. Shift. Very subtle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, He said, let me go on. So, okay, we'll move on to the first step. He said the first step towards creating a life of fullness in all things is to find within your self-definition something that you are truly grateful for. Could be an attribute, a relationship, an item, whatever it is, you'll feel full when you imagine it. You will feel plentiful. You won't see yourself in short supply of this thing. You'll see yourself overflowing with it. And once you have that feeling, whatever it is, um, whatever it is that makes you feel abundant, full, overflowing, hold it, identify it, and name it. And he suggested calling it Samson. Okay. He said the name, Samson. Samson. Well, you'll hear the rest. The name will make you smile and elicit an all-powerful, overflowing, and abundant feeling. You'll feel rich. And that's step one. Identify your Samson. Okay. And then he said, the second step, is to find that thing in your life that generates the opposite feeling that Samson does. When you think of this thing, it zaps you of all the power and fullness that Samson gives you. It's the reverse feeling of Samson. Mm. You could call it Delilah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like how he's just naming them for our, that's just for our ease, right? For our ease, so we understand that. He said, when you have this feeling, you will feel weak, empty and unable to give or share what little you have. This could be money, could be health, could be love, compassion, time. This Delilah feeling initiates emptiness and lack. And that's step two, to identify Delilah. When you think of Delilah, you will feel depleted. You will not feel full. For step three, Practice bringing the feeling of Samson into the Delilah field. Imagine Delilah. And then allow Samson to show up full strength. He can just sit there watching, observing the weakness and emptiness that Delilah initiates. At some point, and this is what he's calling step four, the Samson feeling will initiate something in the Delilah field. It could be allowing a few extra dollars for fun that day, giving something extra to charity, reaching out to someone you know who needs encouragement, maybe someone you've been avoiding, taking a little more time getting dressed for the day. Each of these things in some way indicate abundance, spare money, extra time, surplus compassion, plenty of self-worth. And when he said that, I had a hard time with this step because trying to imagine how I would do that. But he's not saying, he's not really saying anything specific. He's just saying, and this is how I hear it, that both feelings are valid. You know them both because you, they're your own feelings, whatever they are. You know, your Samson feeling could be this whatever unpaid bill or something, right? And then your Delilah feeling could be, I don't know, something beautiful that you know that you have, that you hold, could be a, an emotion that you feel. Both feelings are valid. You feel them both. You've experienced them both. And all he's saying is bring them together and acknowledge that they're both real. They're both 3D feelings. And I think what he's Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, please. I was gonna say if so if, if I can uh, feel into it and sort of comprehend it, what I think I'm hearing and feeling is I think what he's doing is he's he's using 
He's using the names as characters for us to identify the emotion, which makes it really easy to do that because mm-hmm. we can like add a face and a name. So that's good. Right. But by bringing the uh, step three, by imagining the Delilah, the lack we may have in our own aspects or what have you, by mm-hmm. imagining the the, the, the the lower aspects that we're not perhaps happy with mm-hmm. and inviting Samson in the higher vibration. Mm-hmm. I think what that's doing is by inviting the higher vibration in to Delilah, the lower, mm-hmm. is ultimately it's going to lift it. It has no choice but to be lifted up right. and see right. that it is, right. in fact, an, it's yes. a positive aspect as well. Right, right. And right. we've just been brainwashed to believe that it's horrible, but it's not. It's like being right-handed and being really, really good at writing with the, the right hand, but the left is not so good. It's, it's mm-hmm. just it's not a bad thing. It just it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. We've been brainwashed also to believe that one is more important or one is an expression of our value, right? So mm-hmm. if it's a lack of money or whatever it is we, we feel we lack, which is usually money for us, mm-hmm. um, that we're not worth it and nothing else matters. When we right. think of money, we just only have to think about money and that we don't have enough. How are we going to pay this this month? or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, But then he's saying, just bring the other feeling in and let it sit there, do something with it. Mm -hmm. And then he said, for step five, make a note of those Samson moments that you've brought in something brief and true. It could be quote, rolled down my window and gave a $5 bill to that man at the traffic light. You should have seen his smile Mm -hmm. or took mom for ice cream today. It was great to hear her laughing or wore my blue sweater today. Damn, I looked good. You know, something Mm -hmm. like that. The point is to say something that elicits that feeling when you read it. So to take note of it, just have a little whatever piece of paper that you just say, today I did this. And then he said, repeat for step six, repeat steps three, four, and five every single day. First for seven days, then move it to two weeks, then a month. Each with each day, you will be altering your creative field. There will be so much Samson that Delilah will be diminished. She'll be there for a while, but you'll be having so much fun that she'll eventually forget what what she was there in the first place for. Mm. And then he said, for step seven, and this is the last step, you'll And um, my interpretation of this step is that he said it will arrive unexpectedly. And I wrote a note on the side to myself that said, you'll see abundance somewhere where it wasn't before. He said, something will have shifted in your field. Its color will be richer. It's sound more harmonious. It's feeling less constricted. In the depths of this, you'll notice that you seem to have more. It could be anything, yet more than likely, it will be something in the Delilah feeling that has changed. And it didn't change, and make note of this, that it didn't change because you looked at it or focused on it. It changed because you changed. Mm -hmm. You looked somewhere else and created a bit of happiness. And, um, And that's... That's as much as I want to read from that part. Um, He said, physical life holds contrast always because he talks about, you know, Delilah is still a possibility. It's still going to be there. It's not like it's going to go away, but it's how you interpret and define and amplify those contrasts, the colors, your field. This has been a playful suggestion, yet very appropriate for self-worth and abundance to increase both hinge on your creative field and therefore both can be altered by you. Um, Yeah. You know, I always find spirit is for one. I don't want to take away from, you know, (laughs) I don't, I almost don't know what I should call him or how I should address him, but I I know if I I always find it so interesting that they, you know, their, their guidance is always, so incredibly practical and simple mm-hmm. to the point where it's almost like we've made things like way harder than they need to be because when <laughs> he, he gives guidance like this it's just like okay so sit down all right so think about something that is amazing about yourself and how does that feel that's so good and then think about something that's not 
and give mm-hmm. it a name and then invite them to come in together every day. Together, mm-hmm. instead of saying, you know, I object, I object, I'm broke. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to, no, you know, think of something else. So just let it sit next to you. Yeah. And, and he said, there's more here. There's actually a lot more. <laughs> okay. Um, but so let's see if this helps us get to the, the whole thing. He said, the whole point is to initiate love in all things physical for love is your most valuable currency and you have been told everything but that truth you will allow it as valuable when you count on it you will allow Mm -hmm. it as a thing of worth when you expect to encounter it in all of your days it may help you to draw a paper heart were to write the word love or agape on a small sheet of paper and carry it with you in your pocket, in your wallet, carry it where you expect to find your money, the things you use to obtain things that are useful to you, the things that are recognized as being worth something. Mm-hmm. And then, he, so, and I like that idea, putting, you know, I have in my wallet a fake million dollar bill but I'd much rather have <laughs> the word agape or a heart in there. Right. And I, cause I mm-hmm. see it whenever I look through my bills, my right. ones and fives, <laughs> I see my million and I go, Oh, but I'd m- much rather, because what would make me feel truly feel better would be a heart. A loving you want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's, yeah. Um, he talked about, and I don't, I'm hesitating to read this part um, because it talks about the end of your life. You will not care about money. You'll feel rich according to how you have loved. And, you know, I, I just don't want to really go spend a lot of time there, but he does say that inside his discussion here. Um, And then he says, the currency of love is a field. Once you tap into that field with small moments of generosity sharing, giving, compassion, you'll experience an abundance of it and know that it has no end. Love is not separate from money. Love is not separate from you. As your value has been tarnished due to lack of money, you may have accepted that. And he puts value in parentheses there, you know, quotation marks there, Mm because it's not true, but he's saying you... we feel that our value is tarnished because of lack of money. You may have accepted that as truth, truth about you. This is where you'll have to unhinge the two from one another. Mm. Once you do, you'll see the abundant source of love that is you. And once you recognize that truth, your field will reflect that. It has to, it is law. And then he talked about the law of attraction And that there's a deeper truth within that law. It's not only the actions that are doing the attracting. It is the feeling behind them. Mm -hmm. And this is why you'll be better served by starting with small things that are easily given. Things you know you have, you already have. Kindness, a few dollars, time, compassion. Start small, but start. Mm -hmm. He said... For the light increases every day on earth now, offering a soft cushion on which to place your cautious steps into wealth. This light is ready for you. It will enrich and support you along the way. Your secret superpower is emotion. Emotions are creative and they are fuel for manifestation. Do all that you can to give only the best ones away. I love that sentence. Mm. Only the best ones. Give only the best ones away. And you will witness love at its its finest. I also liked how he said emotions are fuel for creation. Mm -hmm. So the more we lose ourselves and love what we're doing, Mm -hmm. that is the whole fuel. I guess that's what we could say is the hard currency. What are we feeding the field, right? The heart, heart, heart. Yeah, These are just yeah. the language I'm using to try to sort right. of put mm-hmm. practical steps around it. Because as I say, most people have a medit- or if people have a meditation practice, this doesn't seem like it's going to take a lot of time at all, but it really is unraveling the belief system 
unraveling, like saying, no, what you told me is not true. It's not true. Yeah. It's just, and, and, and it could even turn into affirmations. Like I am worthy. I create. I You're right. Yes. This. Yes. Mm -hmm. This isn't true. I think of little children, you know, sometimes I remember as a young mother being frustrated with something that I felt was, you know, ridiculous, you know, not ridiculous, but I was angry at the time at whatever they had just done. And I was always amazed that the child never seemed particularly upset at my anger. <laughs> he didn't feel any less worth because, you know, any less self-worth because I was whatever I was yelling about or angry about or frustrated about. He was fine. You know, it was, I just had to get over my anxiety about whatever it was that had just happened. And this was a long time ago, but you know, I just, I think of that. That's almost like a shield. Self-love is like a, like a suit of armor almost. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the world can be saying you're, you know, you're lowly and you're whatever you are, um, whatever the world is trying to tell you, you're sick or you're, you know, you're on the wrong side of politics or the world or, you know, the fence. Um, yeah, there and seems to be such a push right now to, you're not allowed to share your opinion. You know, you've got to mm -hmm. fit in and don't, don't make waves. You know, you're mm -hmm. supposed to be neutral. You know, mm -hmm. don't be or for against anything. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of hard some ways to do that when things are upside down and you know they're upside down. And, and you know they are, right. And also I think, there's, and again, it comes to the feeling mm. for the reason to share or the reason to speak up or to say something, right? If the, mm. if it's coming from a place of, I'm going to say this, so you'll change. Well, okay. That's probably not a really good spot to be in because mm. there's not a lot of depth and strength in that. But if it's coming from a place where, you know, whatever it is that you're speaking of, then, then having having the ability and to allow that to be said and then to withstand whatever said to you after you say it is, is a, is a different thing. It's just different. You know, it's, it's comes from strength, comes from power, comes from truth. And um, it doesn't have to make everybody wrong when you say it. It's just, yeah. you know, the, the language out there is trying to tell us that we should, we should be quiet. And I don't believe that that's necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is really uh, a really good seven step. <laughs> I understand what you mean. <laughs> I said it's a little bit quirky with naming, but I've also right. heard other people naming their hate to hate or whatever. If they have, you know, mm -hmm. get a name as a being or whatever. So, I mean, that makes it very practical, mm -hmm. but it really is about remembering who you are, who you are truly, that you are divine love. We are all divine love absolutely magnificent and magical and creative and powerful and we have just forgotten how to play in creative expression space and when we do it with love and joy and excitement I think that's the way we can easily actually create and, and, and I think that starting in our own lives and starting small is a is a fabulous perfect of course it would be perfect you know like, mm -hmm. thank you one right you know you have a higher perspective than we do you're not in physical right. form perhaps you're not this time. here but you're not down here trying to do it i know i know we can always say it's okay for you to say yeah you're it's easy here. for you to say you're not was... slogging down here <laughs> right 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 so there's a little bit more okay. um so let's see so if um he this is that i love this part your life is a reflection of your field of intent Intend to fill it with what you have an abundance of and watch as that abundance gets reflected back to you in all things. And then he said to intentionally bring the concept of your love currency into your 3D life, you will need to do more than say it, do it, or even see it. You'll need to feel it. Samson is an abundant feeling that you already have. You know it's true. You have felt it. It has enriched you. This is your validation of worth. Even if only for a few moments or days, it was real and it happened. It happened in your 3D life. You felt worthy, abundant, and full. You will have to call up that feeling often on this journey. 
On the contrary, you've been told that your feelings of lack were appropriate due to something else in your life, your looks, your luck, your job, where you live. This is simply not true and will need to be dismissed. It will need to be overpowered by that Samson feeling. This is the reason for naming it so that it will be easy, easily conjured and felt. If it is the actions taken from that feeling, let's call it the Samson feeling, that will initiate greater abundance and supply in all things physical. That is the link you seek. That is the reason to persistently engage in such an exercise as Samson and Delilah to change your creation field. For that, my dear, dear human, changes everything. You have the opportunity now to intentionally create self-worth. For no life has been lived ever that has been completely void of self-love. It may have been dismissed quickly, but it was felt and thus known. There are no shortcuts. There are no quick fixes. This is your journey to enlightenment. It is a circular journey. You'll return to where you began, knowing yourself as divine essence and infinitely worthy. And then with complete certainty, creating life with that truth at its core. It is upon each of you now to redefine self to know the truth and to allow your worth to be defined by that knowing. You are pure love in your value, unmeasurable. Let your creative field be colored with that and you will see it overflowing. And that's- that last thing you said made me cry. Oh. You are pure love, divine overflowing. Can you say that again? What was that last thing? Mm -hmm. You are pure love and your value unmeasurable yeah i think that would be the, a good thing for people to write and put in their wallets mm -hmm. i am pure love and, and i am these immeasurable mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's a good affirmation but that, mm -hmm. that made right. my heart sing oh you said that. good good yeah. yeah that's that's awesome i mean i don't i don't even know if i can, I, I don't have anything to add to that that was absolutely perfect okay all right yeah if it, was, it was beautiful it feels like there's enough practical information in that for us to hang on to and do something with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, as I say, I'm always so amazed at how absolutely incredibly simple it is. <laughs> it's like we mm -hmm. made things so hard. <laughs> right. We just didn't see it. And somebody said, it's yeah. like somebody opened a window that we didn't even know was in the room. <laughs> like, exactly. oh, there's oh. that light. Oh, yeah. 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 That was, per that was perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And I hope that this helps everybody that's listening as well. Oh, so do I. So do I. And so um, we'll just, we'll end here for a minute. I'll, I'll shut down the um, recording and we'll, we'll chat for a minute before we close out. But I just want to say to everyone, that's it for today. Thank you so much for contributing to our collective journey. And thank you for sharing your question and um, lots of love and light. And we'll see you in the next episode.